Hey everybody, this is Catroll Hunter here. We are back with dimes and we are just hoping, crossing our fingers, that we can keep our silver streak alive. Hey everybody, it's James. I'm back. You're watching my channel, Catroll Hunter, and we have dimes and they have been incredible. Our last two boxes have given us 14 silver dimes. We had eight in our last box and six in the box before that. I have no idea what's in here. We need to crack it open to find out. I didn't see anything just looking at the enders on the top here, but obviously anything can be in these rolls. And I'm just hoping that we might possibly have something even just close to what we had would be incredible. Let's crack open some rolls and see what we might find. Roll number one, we're always checking our edges. We're gonna have at least a couple of American edges. I see them in here, and one's gonna be pretty new. But I think we're gonna have our first find right in roll number one here, a foreign. I see a bit of a different reeded edge there. All right, well, there is our different edge. It's just different than the Canadians and the Americans. And we've got a Bermuda. 10 cents from 1988. We're off to a hot start already. We got a cool coin. Roll number one. Awesome. Still in that roll, our first American is relatively new. It's a 2018P. It's got some kind of damage on Roosevelt's head. No worries. And uh, I can see our other one back here. And it is looks a little older. Not too old. It's a 2002 Philadelphia. Roll number three, I almost missed it. It's our first 2021 Blue Nose under sale, and it is a beauty. Roll number four, and we've got another one. And if I haven't declared this yet, I'm going to say it out loud right now. I think this is my favorite circulation Canadian coin. I just love the design and the way the light reflects off the water. It just, it's awesome. Roll number 11, and we're going to have a foreign coin I have never seen before. This is 2017 five sen from Malaysia. That is a very cool one. I I kind of notice it as I put it down because it has a very smooth edge, but I really didn't think much of it because we'll find some smoother edge Canadians as well sometimes. And that one is really neat. Look at those raised dots on there. That is very cool. Roll number 12, we're going to have our 15th U.S. dime. It is a 1965. Now, interestingly, there is no mint mark on the 65, the 66, or the 67. The U.S. mint, because of a coin shortage at the time, was trying to deter any kind of collecting frenzy that would pull things out of circulation if people thought one mint was more common or less common or more rare than the other. So they stopped putting the mint marks on. So this could be minted in Philadelphia or Denver, possibly maybe even San Francisco, I'm not sure. But we couldn't know because they didn't put any mint marks on for these few years. Only in 1968 did they start putting the mint marks back on the American coinage. Same roll, it's a 1968. You know what we gotta do. Uh, we gotta check it, it's a transition year. It could be silver, but that one is absolutely not. It's stuck to that magnet like glue. It is composed of nickel. Roll 17 and look what just slipped down here. We got our first blue nose under sale with the color enamel showing the blue waves. Roll 21, we're at least going to have our 17th and 18th US finds because I can see one right here. And let's see what that is. That is a 2004 Philadelphia, but when I through the roll down here, I could see the ender over here was another US, this one, a 2000P. Roll 22, and we've got our third non-US foreign. It's another coin with a boat on it, but this one is from the East Caribbean States, 2009, 10 cents, and features Queen Elizabeth II. So we've got three foreigns on the board now. We're already in roll 30. It's kind of slow going here. I edge check every roll, and you can see no sign of silver. There's slight variations in the coloring on the edges of the Canadian coins, but nothing that uh, says silver in this roll. There are a couple of American edges you can see, so that's going to bring us up to 32 for this hunt so far, and we're 30 rolls in, so averaging just over one a roll. 
And that one looks like it's going to be pretty brand new. And this one looks a little older. And uh, if it's anything special, I'll bring you in. Otherwise, we'll just keep chugging along because we expect to find lots of U.S. in our Canadian dimes. Roll number 32. And we're going to have another foreign. You can see that big edge right there. So I'll lay this down as carefully as I can. And we'll try to see what we got here. Looks like it might be five pence from Great Britain. And it is 2012. Five pence, another cool foreign to add to the board. Awesome. And check it out. As this spilled out, I can see at least a couple of things here. So we may as well get them. There is our second color blue nose under sale. I see another non-colorized one. There we go. Beautiful. And we saw that there were a couple of Americans in here. So there's one. It's a 1990D. And the other one's in here somewhere, but I'll go through the rest of these and make sure I don't miss anything because that roll had a bunch of stuff. Hey, I figured we'd take a quick little break here and take a look at some things that I just got recently. My mom was helping my aunt, her sister, move from one city to another and they were going through things in her house and found some coins. My aunt said, give these to James. I know he's into coins, so I got these really neat um, we'll take a peek at what I got here. I'm really excited about this one. This is really, really cool. But first off, I got a collection of South African coins. These are 50 cents. There's a, a design with some flowers and 50 cents, South Africa, 1966. Now, these coins were minted in two different variations. One in Afrikaans, Sweet Africa, 1966, and another one in English. South Africa, 1966, and I got both of those. That's really neat. Got a few other years here, 78, 77, 76, so that's really cool. A couple of British coins. We got uh, 10 new pence. This is going to be from the 80s probably, or 70s, 73. And then here is an older one. This is a 1956, two shillings. There's Queen Elizabeth. It's not silver. This is copper nickel. Really neat. And... Uh, even got a Cineplex Odeon game token. So if I want to go and watch a movie, I, this will probably still work. Galaxy Cinemas. So there we go. I'm all set up for my next outing. And a few Canadians here. We got some older nickels. A 1966 here with Queen Elizabeth. And then this one is really cool. This is a 1951. This is King George the Sixth. It's actually in pretty decent shape. This is the... Uh, oh, goodness the 200th anniversary of the discover of discovery of nickel in Canada. So this is the, the nickel refinery in um, Sudbury, Ontario. So very famous. We went there as, as kids. We actually toured the nickel mine and they have what we call the big nickel, which is a representation of this nickel, this commemorative nickel. And it's a huge one. I think I've got a picture somewhere. If I do, I'll sort of post a picture uh, here so you can see what that monument looks like. And then check this out. If I don't toss it around, we have a Canada $1. This is 80% silver commemorative from 1967. And it's in a pouch here from the Toronto Dominion Bank. This probably came from the bank in 1967. You could probably buy the silver dollars there in this little protective pouch. So it's been in here, I think, for a very, very long time. And so that's really cool. There's a variation you can find on here where this is oriented incorrectly. This is the correct medallion orientation where the obverse and the reverse are oriented the same way. But this last one is really, really neat. This is a savings book. So you can see the, see the Ontario Loan and Debenture Company in London. I think that's a stamp on there. So this would have been uh, printed up and given to people. So um, oh, they printed it up, maybe gave it to uh, the, all their customers. This probably was given out to kids to save money and uh, advertise their services. And um, I'm going to open it up because what we're going to see here, this is really, really neat. It's full. The easiest way to save a dollar is first to save the dimes. But if you can see what I can see, check out all these dimes on the left. These are all silver dimes. And these first three on the top. These ones are more modern nickel. But if I can get close enough to see the dates, 1939, 1943, 1947 Maple Leaf. And then we get into the 50s, some early 60s, mid 60s into 65, 66. 
These are 68, so these are going to be 50% silver. And then most of the rest of these are also 1968s, but these ones would be the nickel variety. And I think there's a couple down here at the bottom that are in the 70s. So a big thanks to my aunt for thinking of me and passing along uh, some of these uh, really cool historic Canadian coins. King George VI on these 30s and 40s, that's really awesome. And it's added to my silver collection of coins. And uh, I'm not sure if I'll keep it in this book. I think this book is actually pretty neat. A really cool way to save, uh, but that is just really wicked. It's definitely worth more than a couple dollars, that's for sure. Roll, roll number 35. We haven't found any silver yet, but this hunt's been uh, giving us lots of foreigns, and this one's a really cool one. This is a Swiss franc, probably a Swiss half franc. We'll just check it. It's a half franc from 1969. It's not going to be silver. It's probably copper nickel. Um, but that's a cool one. What's really cool about these ones, of course, is that the design hasn't changed on these ones for years and years. So early 1900s to even 1960s, 1980s, you'd find the same design. And it is an iconic coin design. Really, really cool. And just a little further back, we're going to have more Blunos. This might be our 10th now of the non-colorized. I'll have to check. It could be 11. And we see some color peeking out. So I think in our last box, we didn't get any of these colorized ones, but we're back in the color. We've got three so far this hunt. We've still got another 15 rolls to go. Roll 38 looks like we've got a 90s coin. It looks to be in pretty decent shape. This one is a 1998. We've got a little bit of uh, some marks around the edges, but I'm not finding too many of these 90s coins. And on the 98, we're always looking to see if there's a W mint mark. Some of these were minted at the Winnipeg Mint. And we're in sets, and I'm always looking for those 98s that might have been released into the wild. And I just saw right behind it another one with some interesting coloring on it. It just looks like a 2000. And I flip it over. It looks to be have, have some kind of a chemical reaction. It's got some interesting toning and coloring. Look at the blues and greens and yellows. I'll just throw this under the scope, and we can just sort of see those colors if we can. There it is, probably just some kind of environmental damage. I'm not sure what it was, but something has caused some really interesting rainbow toning. Maybe like even some like gasoline or oil or something got on it. Very interesting. Roll 43, we can add another colorized dime to our stack. Another 20, 21 blue nose under sale. Roll 44, we're going to have a foreign in here. It's a little bit smaller and it's got um, a serrations, like a reeded edge for part of it. Kind of like our Toonie, obviously much smaller. I'm I'm not familiar with what that's going to be. we got a couple more Americans in here too. Let's uh, see if we can get that roll down and find this coin and see what in fact it is. I'm going to make a mess of it here. There we go. Ten Groshi. I think this might be Polish. Oh. Yeah, there we go. The Polish Republic 2017. This is one I know for sure I've never found and don't have. And that's a really cool one. That's our sixth foreign of the box. And every single one has been from a different country. And that's really cool. Roll 45, color blue nose number five. Roll 48, found a couple of really nice looking Americans in the teens, so not really old, but we got another color. This is our sixth. Well, that's it. Roll number 50. And a quick edge check tells us there is no silver in here, so our silver streak is going to end. We got 14 in total in our last two boxes, and we were skunked. This time, but that's okay. We had a fun hunt. We got lots of really cool stuff. I'm going to just go through this last roll, see if there's anything else we can find in here, and I'll give you a wrap up. Okay, so here is everything all laid out. We ended up with 48 US dimes, almost an entire full roll there. And incredibly, we got six other foreigns. We got this uh, 10 cents from Bermuda from 1988. One I've never seen before, this 5 Sen 2017 from Malaysia. We got an East Caribbean States from 2009, 10 cents. On the next row, we got a UK 5 pence from 2012. And another coin I've never had before, which is this 10 Groshi, if I'm saying that right, from Poland with that really cool Polish heraldic eagle. 
And then we got that half franc from Switzerland from 1969. And in our Canadian finds, if it wasn't for these 2021 Blue Nose double dates, or we would have been shut out completely. These commemoratives, of course, I already mentioned it earlier, are some of my favorite. The, just the design of the water is just incredible. It's mesmerizing, actually. We ended up getting 16 of the non-color, and we got six of the color. And I don't think we got any of the color last time in our hunt. So at least we got something cool in the Canadians. I hope you enjoyed that hunt if you did. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel, Catroll Hunter, if you haven't already done that. Most of my viewers are not subscribers. About 60% of my viewers are not subscribers. And so I'd really appreciate it. It would be great if you hit that subscribe button and then you'd be alerted when, I might, when my new videos come out. I have videos coming out all the time. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again next time.